हेलो क्लास नाइन दिस इज योर सेकेंड वीडियो ऑन रिविजन ऑफ चैप्टर पॉलिनेशन एंड फर्टिलाइजेशन टुडे वी आर गोइंग टू रीड अबाउट द एजेंट्स ऑफ क्रॉस पॉलिनेशन एंड डिफरेंट कैरेक्टरिस्टिक्स ऑफ डिफरेंट काइंड ऑफ pollination pollination can be brought about by wind water insects animals and even human beings it can also be brought about by birds if the pollination is helped by birds then it is termed as ornithophily ornitho means bird as we can see in case of canna plants when the pollination is affected by elephants then the pollination is termed as elipophily where elipho word has been derived from elephants as we can see in case of rafflesia whose flowers are very large and are found at ground level <clears throat> similarly the pollination which is carried out by insects is termed as entomophily where entomo word is derived from insects where phily means affinity so such type of poly pollination where pollination is brought about by insects it is termed as entomophily or insect pollinated flowers if the pollination is brought about by winds then it is termed as anemophily where anemo stands for wind and phily affinity so wind pollinated flowers are anemophily as in case of maize if the pollination is brought about by water it is termed as hydrophily or water pollination where hydro word is from water and phily means affinity as we can see in case of valisneria let us now know about some of the characteristics of three main type of pollination that is entomophily or insect pollination anemophily or wind pollination and hydrophily or water pollination first insect pollination or entomophily the flowers which show entomophily are large brightly colored scented they produce nectar the pollen grains of such flowers are sticky and flowers tend to be in clusters as we can see in dahlia second is anemophily that is wind pollination in case of the flowers which show anemophily they are small not brightly colored their flowers are without scent or they do not have nectar the stamens are long and usually hang out of the flower so that wind uh, can easily uh, throw the pollen grains to far away places 
Anthers are large and loosely attached. Pollens are produced in very large quantities. Pollen grains are usually very light, dry and smooth in structure. The stigmas are feathery and they hang out of the flower to trap the pollen grains. Such anemophily plants are maize. Hydrophily or water pollination. The flowers showing hydrophily produce pollen grains in very large numbers. In some plants, the pollen grains have specific gravity almost equal to that of water so that they can easily remain floating below the surface of water. Whereas in some special cases, male flowers are such that they float on the surface of water till they meet the female flowers. Such pollination is seen in Vallisneria. Let us know some facts about fertilization. Fertilization is the union or fusion of the nuclei of the male and female gametes. Due to fertilization, gametes are produced and endosperm, embryo are formed and major changes take place in flowers. Here the pollen grains grow a pollen tube which ultimately ruptures the ovary and with the pollen tube comes two male nuclei. One of the male nuclei unites with the egg cell and in this process the synergy cells help in the union or fusion due to which an embryo is formed. So this is one type of fertilization which takes place when one of the male nuclei of the pollen tube unites with the egg cell with the help of synergids to produce the embryo. The polar nuclei in the meantime unites to form the secondary nucleus. This secondary nucleus again unites with the other male nuclei of the tube nucleus resulting in triple fusion. So first fusion was between the polar nuclei to form the secondary nucleus. The second fusion was between the polar nuclei formed, the formed secondary nucleus with the main nuclei of the tube cell resulting in triple fusion due to which endosperm is formed. So in all this particular fertilization and the previous fertilization together is known as double fertilization. So you must remember one fertilization is between the male nuclei with the egg cell where synergid cells are helping in the fusion. When such fusion is going on the polar nuclei unites to form secondary nucleus which again that is the secondary nucleus again unites with the other nuclei male nuclei of the pollen tube resulting in the formation of endosperm. So in all the second fusion also takes place here 
and in all total two fertilization is occurring so it is known as double fertilization so hope you have understood one sperm nucleus fuses with the egg cell nucleus first fertilization and the other sperm nucleus fuses with the two polar nuclei together that is the with the secondary nucleus in all two fertilizations so it is termed as double fertilization now after fertilization the parts of the flower changes where ovary transforms into fruit the ovary wall becomes the pericarp of the fruit ovule becomes the seed placenta becomes the stalk of the seed the outer integument and inner integument of the flower changes into seed coat forming the testa and tegmen the outer part of the seed is testa inner one is the tegmen secondary nucleus gets transformed into endosperm egg cell with synergid cells become embryo and the antipodal cells disorganize completely thank you